Ramanan Lakshmi Narayan, founder and director, Center for Disease Dynam Dynamics, uh, Economics and Policy is also with us. Uh, so as we grapple and try to come out of this pandemic, what is our most important learning that can help us tackle future pandemics? So first of all, thanks Dr. Roy and Mr. Bachchan for uh, drawing attention to health in general and uh, obviously to uh, the great work that you all do. Um, I think COVID was not unexpected in many ways. You know, some of us in our community have been, of people who plan for pandemics, have been thinking about this for years, if not decades. And everything that we do, whether, you know, our choices about what we eat, uh, uh, in terms of environmental destruction, in terms of, uh, of how quickly we allow diseases to spread because of, of policies related to travel, all of these allow diseases like uh, COVID to emerge. Okay. Typically, these d diseases emerge from animals. And I have to tell you, this is a surprise to, you know, probably to many of your viewers. Uh, these zoonotic diseases that come from animals emerge nearly every week of the year. They're happening all the time because these viruses or bacteria are trying to make the jump from animals to humans. And uh, they don't always succeed. Sometimes they succeed and make the jump uh, you know, from wild animals to domesticated animals to humans. And but beyond that, not all of them, in fact, most of them are unable to jump from one human being to another. Jumping from one human to another is a very specific skill set that some of them actually acquire, as happened with COVID, happens with other viruses, whether it's Zika or Nipah virus, or, you know, we've had these viruses actually emerge from India it's, itself. Uh, you know, it's not just that they emerge only from China. We don't generally hear about it because uh, it doesn't really cause much by way of, of, uh, of health harm nor are many people infected. But I'm sure you've all heard of Nipah, which uh, you know, first emerged, first was detected in Malaysia, but then has popped up in different places at, at various points in time. But anytime we impinge on wild animals or we are too close to domesticated animals, which we consume for food, uh, you have to remember that all of the mammal biomass on the planet, of the entire mammal biomass on the planet, 30% is human beings, 60% is the animals that we eat, and only 10% is all the lions and tigers and, and elephants and everything else. So between us and the animals that we eat, we are much of the biomass, the mammalian biomass on the planet. So it is but natural that these diseases do come into humans and this is not going to be the last time and going forward, this will happen again. Yeah. Mr. Ramanan, you know, health, hygiene and environment, as our campaign states, are the three pillars we need to build and solidify if we need to meet future challenges like uh, the coronavirus. What would your thoughts be on this? So the first step is really to have a public health system. If we cannot deal with public health, uh, like simply immunization, which Mr. Bachchan, you've been a big proponent of, uh, particularly for the polio program for, for a very long time, uh, unless we can do those simple things during regular times, we will never be able to carry these out during times of emergency, as the health secretary of Kerala said, you cannot build a public health emergency response system in the middle of that emergency. So either you've done it before or you have not. So, you know, there are digital technologies that you've, you know, that you were just discussing in the context just before this. In fact, you know, I've, uh, I've been associated with something called a health cube, which is a small device like this, which can do 32 diagnostic tests. This sort of technology, you know, needs to be there in every last village can pick up people with, uh, you know, infection diseases, with chronic diseases, uh, you know, with fevers. I think we need to be a lot smarter in the same way that we use mobile. Could you hold that up again and let us know where is it manufactured and is it easily available? This is a made in India, innovated in India product called Health Cube. It is being used uh, widely. There are about a thousand of these out in villages in India. Uh, it can do more than 32 diagnostic tests including for malaria, dengue, chikungunya, typhoid, but also for ECGs, blood pressure, hemoglobin. So this is just about one kilogram. And uh, it is, uh, it, 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 you know, it's, it's easily operatable by anyone uh, with a seventh standard education. So this is being used by a &Ms in 22 states around the country. The Vodafone Foundation sponsors these across the country. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really, really easy to use. Wow. And it's wow. available, uh, it's available certainly within India as well. Yeah, what so is, what, what is the percentage of efficiency of, of this uh, machine? 
So I, I think you mean accuracy. So this is as accurate as a yeah as a as a machine that you would see in. Uh, uh, yes, I can hear you. Uh, this is as accurate as a machine that you would see in, uh, uh, you know, in, in a doctor's office anywhere. In fact, many doctors use this as well. But the idea is that it's not just this and other technologies should help us leapfrog public health in this country in the same way that mobile phones helped us leapfrog not putting in landlines at every last village. And we have to use COVID as the opportunity to rethink public health in this country. We cannot let this opportunity go by. Fantastic. Mr. Good Ramanan. Point. Good point, Mr. Ramanan. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much for joining us and talking solutions because that is the need of the art.